Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jeff. I want to welcome you this evening to our Loyola Academy Virtual College Fair. We've got six Big Ten institutions presenting this evening. Um, as a reminder for all those in attendance, your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. You can interact with the various institutions via the Q&A box below. So feel free to do that at any point for any of the universities along the way here. You do not have to wait for them to present to ask questions. Obviously, please specify which university you're asking the question to. And then finally, if they don't get an answer to you before the end of this, they will get a transcript and be able to answer it afterwards. Without further ado, I will turn it over to the Gophers of Minnesota and Jacob. Thank you very much. Good evening, Loyola Academy. For the sake of time, I'm going to move very quickly through this because, you know, honestly, there's a lot of awesome schools out here tonight, and I want to I want you to be able to see everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and just dive in right away. So my name is Jacob Osterman, and I am from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I'm actually coming to you live from St. Paul right now. Um, so with a quick overview of our university, as you'll see with Big Ten schools, we are a large university, right? Our school is 31,000 undergraduate students. We have 150 majors and over 135 minors. How we organize these majors is in eight freshman admitting colleges. So we do have it that when you apply to us, you are applying directly into your actually top two colleges of choice. So you do need to know a little bit about what you want to do because we don't have like a generalized studies college. Um, I do think this is actually a benefit of having these eight individual colleges like this because each college has their own career advising, study abroad services, um, academic advising, and really tailored experience to make sure that you really get high quality support in your particular collegiate experience. Also, our undergraduate body, yes, is 31,000 undergraduate students, but our student to faculty ratio is 17 to 1, which isn't too bad. And this is regardless of major across the entire university. Now, life on campus, so we, all, we have over 900 student groups. You will hear this is going to be very common amongst Big Ten schools, and we also have that benefit as well. And with us having so many student groups on campus, it really does bring home the point that you will not be bored on campus. I guarantee you, on our campus and probably the other campuses as well, someone on campus is going to have similar interests to you. You just got to get out there and meet them. Also, we are Minnesota's tier one land grant flagship research university in the state of Minnesota. So yes, we have a relationship with our state, but also that means that roughly 90% of all the research done in the entire state of Minnesota is done through our system in some capacity. So there's an immense amount of research opportunities available on our campus. We also have one of the most comprehensive learning abroad programs in the country, over 200 programs in over 60 countries. So we take pride that regardless of major on campus, if you want to diversify your experience and really um, see another part of our incredible world, we highly encourage that, absolutely. And then we do have a lot of pride for our 23 Big Ten teams. Actually, we're really stoked about our brand new men's collegiate basketball coach. Congrats to Ben Johnson. Um, but basically, I will say that for student spirit on campus, our biggest rivalries for us, I would say, is Minnesota is definitely Iowa and Wisconsin. So you will definitely know when they are on campus and you will feel the buzz as we are the Maroon and Gold State. We have over a million Gopher fans coming to cheer on our sports teams each year. But I think the biggest thing that really does kind of stand out for our campus is just our incredible location and having a major metropolitan area literally in our backyard. Meaning that this train that you see right here, just on the right side, this is the Metro Transit train. This is the city train from Minneapolis and St. Paul. It goes right in front of our student union. You hop it, you ride it four stops, 20 minutes, and you are in downtown Minneapolis, this beautiful skyline you see on the left side. You don't need a car to get right down to our major downtown city. And this gives you some immediate access. You know, on the professional side, we have 16 Fortune 500 companies that are based in the Twin Cities alone. Some of these companies you see up top here. We have the largest career fair in the state with over 250 employers each year bring, looking to bring in our students. So we have an immense amount of practicums, co-ops, internships, student experience, student teaching, whatever real life experience that you can think of, literally in your backyard. And then, you know, college is more than just sitting in a classroom. What are you gonna do for fun, right? What are you gonna do on a Wednesday night when you have hours to kill or a Saturday after the Gopher game? Well, maybe you wanna be a sports fan like me. There are six professional sports teams right off this train. Maybe you want to see a show at the illustrious Guthrie Theater or the Orpheum Theater. Maybe a concert, the legendary First Ab or the Armory, former Intimate Field. 
But then also, we have over 70 different languages and dialects in the Twin Cities. We have our own cultural scene. We have our own restaurant scene. I've been living in the Twin Cities for years, and I find a new restaurant every weekend. But I do want to make a plug for all of you in Illinois. Portillo's is in Minnesota. Just to make that little plug, because I know that's a big deal. And then I want to say a little bit about why Minnesota. What, why do students really want to stick around? Well, so for us, hopefully you've seen so far in this presentation that we, that we all the reasons that we have a 93% retention rate, meaning that 93% of our freshmen come back after freshman year to continue their study sophomore year. And that's a big deal because for a lot of students, um, you know, for a lot of colleges, they kind of want to study that because they find that when students come back sophomore year, they're very likely to complete their degree. But then also for some students, it's, you know, they've been there for a year, they've kind of been like, you know what, this college isn't my flavor, I want to try somewhere else, or maybe college isn't for me. And we think that 93% is something you're really proud of, because that's really high. Also, with all of our support services, like I spoke to earlier about, you know, the individualized, service, individualized services in each of the colleges, does lead to that across our entire university, roughly 90% of all of our graduates, some colleges have a little bit higher than 90, some are about 2% lower, um, but they will be entering employment or graduate school within six months after graduation. And we feel pretty proud of that. So this is my information. Um, you know, right now, this is a pretty quick overview and I would love to answer any question you may possibly have about Minnesota, the Twin Cities, our campus, you name it. Coming out of Illinois, I'm your guy. So I'm happy to put a face with the name and I'm wearing my favorite shirt today. Um, you see my number there. You also see my email. If you like, please take a quick screenshot of this. Otherwise, I can also put this information in the chat and I wanna pass it off to Kylie to make sure that we hear about her group. Thanks, Jacob. Kylie, take it away about the Boilermakers. Awesome. There we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Kylie Bruss, and I am an admissions counselor at Purdue University. Um, and like Jacob said, we have a brief overview tonight, so I'm going to jump right in and get started. Here's a little bit of a breakdown by Purdue of Purdue by the numbers. We are a large public institution in the Big Ten. We are also the land grant institution for the state of Indiana. We have about 34,000 undergraduate students. About half of those are coming from within the state of Indiana, but about 37% are from the other 50 states and about 12% are from other, all the other countries around the world. We are located in West Lafayette, Indiana, which really is a college town in, in every sense of the word, uh, but there's always different activities happening both on campus and in the community. In the fall, we have a farmer's market right on campus every Thursday. Uh, there's an ice skating rink in the winter. It's super easy to get around um, both the West Lafayette and the Lafayette community. We are located about an hour north of Indianapolis and two hours south of Chicago, so pretty close um, for our Illinois uh, community. And something important to know is that there's actually shuttle buses that will pick students up from our campus and take you to either the Indianapolis airport or the airports in Chicago, uh, which, which you can use to either fly somewhere, get home for the weekend or explore a city for a weekend. There's a lot of different ways for students to get engaged and involved academically on our campus, research definitely being one of them. There's tons of research going on at Purdue at all different times and any student at Purdue is welcome to get involved in research. It can be related to your major, it can be unrelated to major, your major, whatever you wanna get involved in, there's gonna be an opportunity for you to do so. We do also have our honors college at Purdue, which is for students who are interested in an interdisciplinary learning community. Honors, honors college students typically live in our honors residence hall their first year. They'll take about 24 credits of honors level coursework. But the main thing that honors college students will do is they'll complete a capstone project within their final two years at Purdue. And this can be about anything they want. It can be a research project, an essay, creation, and they'll present their findings before their time is up as a Purdue student. There's a lot of different ways to kind of make the academic experience at Purdue your own. Two really popular ways are our Entrepreneurship and Innovation Certificate and then our Cornerstone Liberal Arts Certificate. Both of these function kind of like minors, but they're really popular for students to add on to their degree program. Maybe you're interested in learning how to run a business and getting hands on in that process. That Entrepreneurship Certificate would be great for you. Or a lot of our STEM students will add on this liberal arts certificate to take courses in communication and public speaking to really diversify their education. 
And that, another way to do this is through our Degree Plus program. This is a partnership between the College of Liberal Arts and all the other colleges at Purdue, where if a student wants to double major between those two colleges, the Liberal Arts College will actually waive the core curriculum requirements for that college, making it easier, easier to double major and graduate within four years. Our Center for Career Opportunity, or CCO, is nationally ranked. Um, they bring hundreds of different companies to campus to recruit Purdue students for internships and jobs every single year. They have resume prep, interview prep. They even have a career closet if you need something to wear last minute for an interview or a job fair. And they also have pre-professional advising resources for any of our students who are interested in, in continuing their education after their four years at um, and like Jacob mentioned, there's tons of ways to get involved um, at most of these big 10 institutions, especially at Purdue. Uh, some of the most popular ones you'll hear of is our Purdue music organizations. We have Greek life on campus. We have a big go-kart racing event that happens in the spring called Grand Prix. That's a really big um, event that a lot of students are, will get involved in. But getting involved on campus is a great way to establish community and also have some leadership experience. When it comes to the academic structure of Purdue, we have 11 different academic colleges and over 200 different majors. Purdue is a direct admit institution, so the applicator or the major that you select on your application is going to be the major that you'll start in if you are admitted to that major. We do allow our students to select a first and a second choice major on their application, which essentially means if we're unable to admit you for your first choice major, we'll review your application again for a second choice major, giving our students the best opportunity to become a Boilermaker. When it comes to evaluating your application, we really do take the holistic approach, which you'll probably hear a lot through your college search. But for us, this means that while your academics, test scores, if you have them, grades, the courses that you're taking are important, we also really want to get to know who you are as a student. We're gonna dive into your essays, your extracurricular involvements, your passions. We wanna know what makes you thrive and um, what you've been spending your time doing and what you want to be spending your time doing uh, during your college experience. If you're interested in learning more about this, I definitely recommend um, checking out one of our virtual information sessions where we get more into the details of this application process. And then finally, here's a little bit of breakdown of the cost of attendance at Purdue. The really important thing that I wanna note about this slide is that tuition at Purdue has been frozen for 10 consecutive years. So it has not gone up in 10 years, which is initiative from our president's office. He's really, really passionate about making the Purdue education as affordable as possible to as many students as we possibly can. So that's all I have for you all today. Again, I'd be happy to answer any questions that come up in the Q&A, and I'll go ahead and share my contact information in the chat. Thank you all. Thanks, Kylie, appreciate that. Next, we head over to Iowa and visit with the Hawkeyes. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Sheila Schecker, one of the associate directors based on campus at the University of Iowa. With me today is also Erin Monroe, who is an assistant director based out in California, and she will be overseeing the Q&A. So definitely send us as many questions as you would like. Now, as you can see on this uh, screen is a great shot of our campus. When you are choosing the University of Iowa, you're looking to spend about four years of your time in what we consider the epitome of a college town, Iowa City, Iowa, home of the Hawkeyes. Right across the street from campus is our downtown Iowa City area. So you get to spend quality time in the various restaurants, bookstores, coffee shops, live music venues, and we even have a campus-based Target and a Dunkin' Donuts truly right across the street from that gold dome that you see there on the heart of our campus. Now the University of Iowa is a flagship university. We're a tier one university, and as you can see, a member of the Big Ten. We are very proud of that. I was home to one of the largest research and teaching hospitals in the country, as well as globally recognized as a leader when it comes to the study and craft of writing. Now, as far as who fills our building. Uh, there we go. As far as who fills our building, we enroll just over 22,000 undergraduate students and just under 32,000 total students. So when you're looking at the Big Ten schools, we are actually one of the smallest of the Big Ten institutions. And we're, we're, we're perfect for where we're at with that. Now, the campus is full of culture and history, and really every student brings their own story to Iowa City. 
You can see students are also very uh, successful and prepared when they come to the university and you can see the profile of our academic uh, first year class. And about 50% of our students are actually from out of state. So just actually over 40% right now. And those most popular would be Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, California, and Texas. So you're surrounded by many students from all over the country. We offer over 200 areas of study at the University of Iowa. Some of the more popular majors for first-year students from the state of Illinois include, include many of the majors in the Tiffany College of Business, majors within the College of Engineering, Psychology, English and Creative Writing, Sports and Recreation Management, and all areas of the health sciences. That includes everything from neuroscience, nursing, pharmacy, all the pre-med programs, um, and continue talking about like human physiology and biology. So if you love the health sciences, you can't go wrong with the university. Now, Iowa, Iowa's application for the fall of 21 class, we are still open. For our fall of 2022 class, we'll be opening up our application in August. We accept the University of Iowa institutional application, the coalition application, as well as a common application. There really is no preference for which one you prefer to do, and that's perfectly fine. Now, please note, we will be adjusting some deadlines for our fall 2022 class. So details are still in the works. And at this time, just recommend applying early in your fall, um, fall the fall of your senior year. Now, if you have taken the ACT or SAT um, or plan to do so, you can see here that our admissions process is pretty transparent for our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. The University of Iowa also offers direct admission opportunities into our Tiffany College of Business, College of Engineering, College of Public Health, and the College of Nursing, which is one of the more popular college um, direct programs at the University of Iowa. If you need more information or have interest in those, please do visit our admissions website for more details. I'm also happy to inform for the fall of 2022 class, we will continue to be test flexible for the ACT or SAT. So it's up to you, but we encourage you to apply with or without whatever is best for your situation. If you happen to apply without the um, uh, test score, we do ask that you send us the Common App essay, a personal statement, um, as well as the transcript from your high school for us to dig a little deeper and more holistically. Now I wanna talk about the culture of our academics at the university. The best way to describe it is very, very much more collaborative versus competitive. We have a 15 to one student faculty ratio. So you really get to know your, your instructors as well as your classmates. In fact, 80% of our classes at the University of Iowa are 30 students or less. Just under 4% of our classes have a capacity of 100 or larger. And research is a big component for our students. About 35% of our students will engage in research before they graduate from the University of Iowa. We also believe in student success. That is one thing that we're there for is when it comes to student support services, not just academically, but also when it comes to your well being. We have some great supplemental instruction tutoring. We have very strong help programs when it comes to chemistry, English, mathematics, for example, but we also have um, mental um, counseling, mental health counseling support within our main part of campus, as well as the residence hall systems. Now, as our employers will share with you when they're hiring our Hawkeyes, it's more than what you do in the academic classroom. And you've heard many of my peers already speak to being engaged outside the classroom. We also have a lot of student organizations on our campus, everything from social, academic, there's cultural, there's definitely more philanthropic sports, performing arts, continue doing whatever you're passionate on about. Also start something new and try something new if you'd like. This is a great photo of Kinnick Stadium, which we all hope to be in come fall. And this just showcases the spirit and the culture that's part of the energy that's the University of Iowa being a Hawkeye. By being involved, you're living and learning in one of America's best college towns. So it's really a great place for you to call home. All right, we can go on and on. I know I can share lots of great information, but we're here for you. Aaron and I will continue to answer questions in the Q&A. We have virtual visits going on and we are currently open on select dates for small group on campus tours. So if you're looking to visit, please visit our campus visit site for more details. Uh, thanks for your interest and as always, go Hawks. Thanks, Sheila. Appreciate that. Students, don't forget you can ask questions at any point through the Q&A session. Right now, we're going to head to the East Coast and hit with the Turpins of Maryland. Yes, thank you so much. And I was um, planning on saying that myself because I'm back here on the chat and feel free to send any Q&A my way and I'm happy to answer those um, once I'm done presenting here today. So. 
Uh, my name is Robert Oliveri, and I am the Midwest Regional Recruitment Coordinator for the University of Maryland. Now, our some big facts about us is we have 30,000 plus undergraduate students. We are, like our partners here at this session, a Big Ten school. So we have that large campus feel in that college town. Our location is College Park, so it's truly in the name. College Park, Maryland, you have that Big Ten experience, the large Maryland pride, the college town feel. On top of that, we have over 800 different student organizations and we have 43.6 undergraduate students that identify as students of color. Our commitment to diversity is very strong at the University of Maryland. And some of the reasons for that is because we have such a phenomenal population and we know it adds to your educational value. Being challenged on your views and beliefs and points is so important throughout learning and growing and creating what we call innovation or fearless ideas at Maryland. I do want to highlight that we're also number one for LGBTQ plus students by Pride Campus Index, and we were ranked number seven by Ford Magazine for Jewish student life. Now, diving a little deeper into our location, College Park, Maryland, again, is that true college town, and we're wedged right in the northeast corridor of Washington, D.C. We are only four miles outside of the nation's capital, and we're about 45 minutes from from Baltimore. So you have two major markets to really work out of for networking, internships, and post-graduation job opportunities. As I was saying before, Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, and it's calling you for the networking, the internships, the phenomenal nightlife and historical neighborhoods. And on top of that, every major industry has a governmental department that is related and located and based in Washington, DC. So our aerospace engineering program works directly with NASA. Our criminal justice program is ranked number one because you work with FBI and CIA. Uh, even if you're not thinking about a governmental type job, we have so many other opportunities. Like if you're interested in art history or the music and theater scene, there's so many opportunities at the Smithsonian Suite of Museums or our multiple different theaters in the theater district. Now talking about our programs, here's a list of all of our different colleges or overarching umbrella genres. We have 90 different majors to choose from. So you have a lot of different opportunities listed in here. We do have something called a limited enrollment program. It's a two tier process. So step one would be applying or process one would be your general application, which goes through me. If I say yes, then it goes to the department. And then if they say yes, you get a direct entry seat into your program. If for whatever reason the school says no, you still are admitted to your, our university as a general student undeclared or in what we call letters and sciences. You still have the opportunity to internally transfer after your freshman year. I'm going to say that one more time because it's very important. Direct entry is one option, but you can internally transfer if you do not gain your program of choice right off the bat at the University of Maryland. Now, on top of that, and all the details and logistics are listed at lep.umd.edu in the red box there. Now, to talk a little bit about the value added and the experiences you'll get outside the classroom, we have over $500 million in research grants that our students use um, with faculty and in small group research opportunities. 86% of our students have at least one internship, 55% have two or more. 22% of our students study abroad, that's double the national average, and we can work it into any major course plan. And we have critically acclaimed living and learning programs. If you want to live with people with the same interests, like the ones listed above, or other tricks and trends, which are listed on our website. Our student life is phenomenal. We have 17% Greek life in our vibrant college town with Division I athletics. And we really truly give back to College Park, DC and the Baltimore area consistently. Now diving into the application process, we are a dual application school. So there is Common App and Coalition that you can choose from. These are all the things that we do require. It's also listed on our website. Notice activities list, essay, and the TERP application portal. So once you're done with your general large platform, you still will submit a TERP application portal with test scores 
uh, or I'm sorry, with answering the test optional question, we will be test optional for the fall 2022 and 2023. These are the factors we review on. It's truly a holistic review for our students and we nothing rules you in or rules you out of a admission letter to the University of Maryland. Early action deadline, if you don't hear anything else, hear this. Early action deadline is November 1st and it is of the utmost priority to apply before November 1st. It gives you priority consideration for the best admissions decision and it serves as your scholarship application as well as your living learning special programs honors program application. So everything is under consideration if you apply early action. I unfortunately cannot offer any of that on November 2nd. So November 1st is so, so essential for that early application and the best admissions decision. And it's all one application. So you sit back, you relax, and you won't find out until February 1st. So November 1st, you're done with University of Maryland and you're set to go. Thank you so much. And my contact info, I'll also put in the chat. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate your time. Next, we'll head back to the Midwest and Michigan State University. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, everybody. Good evening. My name is Sylvia Hernandez, and I am the manager of Illinois recruitment for Michigan State University and work with all the students from Loyola Academy. So happy to be here tonight. Um, I am based right here in the Chicagoland area. I will also preface my presentation by saying I do live right by the blue line train, the L. So sometimes it likes to go by and make a lot of noise as I'm talking. So um, I'll jump right in and give you some statistics about Michigan State. Um, as you can probably tell by now, a lot of us are starting to sound very similar. Um, a large four-year public institution. We're located in East Lansing, Michigan. We are about three and a half to four hours away from the greater Chicagoland area. So definitely a very popular choice from students because we are so close. Um, and so you're doing something different. You're maybe getting out of Illinois, but still something close and something that you're you know, used to hearing about, especially with us in, in, as part of the Big Ten. We are one of the we are the eighth largest school in the country. So one of the larger Big Ten universities with almost 50,000 students, uh, the majority of those being undergraduates working on that first degree, just coming out of college like yourself. Uh, we do have students in any non-COVID year from 130 different countries, all 50 states, and every single county in the state of Michigan. So what I tell students is you're going to meet someone just like you, someone the complete opposite of you, and everywhere in between. Now, we do have over 200 areas of study, and we do not admit based on major. So if you know what you want to do coming in, that is great. Definitely take a look at all the areas of study that we offer. But if you don't know what you want to do yet, that's okay. We do have a great exploratory preference for students who are unsure on a major and we generally ask that you declare a major by the end of your sophomore year so again a lot to choose from we do have a 93 percent job placement rate which is about 12 percent higher than the national average and some of the factors that play into this you've heard from my colleagues who have already spoken today but michigan state being a big school and all of us really we encourage you to kind of get involved and michigan state is a place where you really can build your own adventure especially because we don't admit based on major we are a very collaborative institution so it's really easy to add on minors do a double major work on projects or research Research with students not only from your own college but other colleges. Um, so entrepreneurship, we are one of the top 25 schools in the nation for entrepreneurship and innovation and we do offer an entrepreneurship and innovation minor that is available to any student on our campus. And then again, those research opportunities and projects are really important. One of my most favorite projects to kind of read about a few years ago, we had students from our James Madison College for Political Science and School of Communications working on a project on how social media was affecting the 2016 presidential election. So things like that, as far as that collaborative nature, definitely happen all the time. We are also a really big school when it comes to study abroad experiences. We do have over 275 programs. We go to every single continent. So, you know, if it's not cold enough for you in the Midwest, you can definitely head on down to Antarctica. We go there every other year. Um, so you can kind of go hang out with some penguins. Uh, one thing that, that's unique to Michigan State study abroad program is that we do give all of our admitted out of state students a scholarship to use toward one of our study abroad programs. So if you choose to come to MSU, you're going to have a little bank of money just kind of hanging out and you can use it toward one of our programs if you are interested in that. So definitely something we encourage. 
On the social side of things, much like my colleagues that, we heard, that you've heard from today, we are definitely a very active campus. As you can imagine, with 50,000 college age students, I promise there is no shortage of activity on our campus. Um, so 900 clubs and organizations, which really range from anything and everything to academic clubs and professional organizations to religious groups, service groups, cultural interest groups, Greek life, performing arts, sports clubs, you name it, we probably have it on campus. We're also very cultural. We generally host over 150 concerts each year. We have the largest theater in the greater Lansing area right on our campus. So all of the Broadway shows come right to campus. If you are a theater buff, uh, just a little hint, it's great to get a part-time job in the Wharton Center because you can see all the Broadway shows for free. And then we do have our own art museum on our campus as well. We are also kind of like um, our own mini city because we are such a big school. So not only are we big in population with 50,000 students, we're also a big place when it comes to our campus size. We own over 5,000 acres. The majority of campus is on about 2,500 of those acres. Now, again, I live right in the middle of the city. So to me, acres means absolutely nothing. I just want to know how long does it take me to get from one end to the other? And it is about two miles. So we're a really big place. Lots of great outdoor park spaces, areas that you can use to study. We have a river that runs through campus, botanical gardens, arboretum, um, children's gardens, you name it, we have it. So again, just a very nice place to explore and enjoy the campus community itself. We're also NCAA Division I for varsity athletics, most known for football, men's basketball, although not that we did very well this year, and then also ice hockey, but 25 sports teams in general, and then a lot of different sports clubs and intramurals that you can be involved with. I wanna just talk a little bit about the application process for Michigan State. If you are a senior right now and you're still looking at MSU, we are taking applications so you can still apply. Um, and also if you are not a senior yet, our application opens right around August 1st each year. We do have three ways to apply. You can see here the Michigan State application, Common App or Coalition. It does not matter to us which application you fill out. Please do whichever one is easiest for you. We do not have preference. Uh, we do focus very heavily on your transcripts and your courses taken in high school. So we are looking at the academic piece of your transcript, looking to see what courses you took ninth through 11th grade, what you're registered for senior year, and then also any rigor in your curriculum. So any AP, IB, honors, dual enrollment type coursework. We do not require test scores. We are test optional for the next five years. So if you would like to send in a test, you're more than welcome to do that, but it's just an extra piece of information. Um, we're not really looking at those test scores. Um, generally, we do recommend that you apply by November 1st for maximum scholarship consideration. So I will uh, end there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sylvia, appreciate that. Final uh, institution is Scott down in Bloomington with Indiana University. Great, thanks so much. Let me share my screen here. All right, well, thanks Jeff and thanks to all of my uh, uh, colleagues from around the Big Ten. Happy to wrap things up for this session. Uh, good evening again, my name is Scott Siegel. I have the pleasure of serving as the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at my alma mater, uh, Indiana University Bloomington, another large public research university in the Big Ten Athletic Conference, uh, about four and a half hours away from the North Shore in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, a college town of about 85,000 permanent residents. Um, I'm also the admissions director that works with students from Loyola Academy, so I would be uh, your contact with IU throughout the application uh, and admission process. Uh, so established in 1820, IU has built a strong tradition of excellence and innovation, both inside and outside the classroom, from nationally recognized academic programs to Division I uh, Big Ten Athletics, all on one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. IU will offer you rich experiences both inside and outside the classroom. We do have close to 33,000 undergraduates uh, that hail from all 50 states and over 130 different countries. You can see quite a few there in our freshman class from Illinois, usually somewhere right around 900 uh, new Illinois freshmen every year. Uh, but IU celebrates not only the geographic diversity of our student body, but its ethnic, religious, political, and socioeconomic diversity as well. 26% uh, of our student body are domestic students of color. 
Part of an IU education is the ability for students to customize their educational experiences. Our 12 schools offer more than 200 majors to choose from, uh, meaning there's something for everyone. Students will be able to work with academic advisors and faculty to create an academic program that is uniquely customizable. Whether it's pursuing a double major, multiple minors, or even creating their own major through our individualized major program, IU students are working towards jobs that are not yet imagined. Student support services help students succeed during their time at IU and beyond through individualized academic advising sessions, academic support centers throughout campus, and our Wells Library Learning Commons. Students have access to the tools to help them become the best students they can be. IU Career Services help students begin their careers before they leave campus by starting early and finishing strong. Our Career Development Center helps students who are still exploring their options understand their skills and interests and help them navigate all of IU's uh, majors uh, that will help them find work in their field of choice. Uh, once a student is declared a major, they will take classes with one of our 12 school-specific uh, career centers and have access to resume workshops, internship and career fairs, and hundreds of employers that come to campus to hire IU students every year. So like our friends from the other Big Ten schools, we have a huge uh, study abroad uh, program. Over 30% of IU students will study abroad at least once before they graduate. Uh, we offer over 300 study abroad programs in more than 50 countries and in 18 languages, including English. Uh, more and more, we do see students combining their overseas study experience with an internship or other hands-on research experiences. Our students in the School of Education, for example, can do their student teaching in one of about 25 different countries through our Global Gateway program. At IU, what you learn outside the classroom will be just as valuable as what you learn in your classes. Uh, with over 750 different student organizations, uh, 55 club and intramural sports, and a thriving arts and culture community that boasts over 1,800 performances on campus every year, uh, from watching an opera staged by the world-class Jacobs School of Music to touring the Eskenazi Museum of Art, you'll find that the cultural resources at IU and in Bloomington rival that of a much larger city. Certainly Hoosier spirit is alive and well on the IU campus. Most athletic events are free to students and our students certainly love to come and cheer on our teams. Assembly Hall boasts the largest student section in NCAA basketball and is known as one of the hardest places in the country to be a visiting team. Uh, Hoosier football, uh, baseball and women's basketball have risen to national prominence over the last few years. Uh, while men's soccer and men's and women's swimming and diving continue to be perennial Big Ten and national championship contenders. Talk for a few minutes here about the application process, I would certainly encourage prospective students to apply by our non-binding early action deadline of November 1. Uh, applying early action offers students the highest admission and scholarship consideration. Uh, early action applicants will also hear back from us earlier by January 15th, letting you enjoy more of your senior year. Things that we uh, would need from you in terms of an application, at least 34 college prep uh, semesters or credits. Uh, we'll also be taking a look at either your weighted or your unweighted GPA, whichever one is higher. We are now test optional and will continue to be test optional beyond COVID. So you'll have the opportunity to apply with or without a test score. And we do have uh, one required essay. It is our supplement on the common application. Uh, so you'll wanna make sure and do that IU specific supplement. And then it'll show you here the middle 50% range for uh, admitted freshmen in terms of grades, SAT and ACT. So happy to answer any questions in the Q&A. Again, I'm your admissions uh, contact with Indiana University. I'll put my contact information in uh, the chat as well. Uh, thanks so much for your interest in IU and all of these great Big Ten schools uh, here this evening. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate that. Well, I want to invite all the panelists to come back on camera real quick. I thought it would be fun. Uh, there's so many traditions, so many interesting, fun facts about each one of these institutions that I've challenged them tonight before we, before we let them run for the evening to give us one interesting, fun, or unique fact about their campus. So we'll go in order of presentation. Jacob, uh, what do you got for us with the Gophers? Absolutely. I'll keep mine short, but uh, Minnesota is the birthplace of cheerleading. 
cheerleading started on our campus in 1898. Uh, we had a student who basically started leading on cheers in the crowd and it kind of grew from there after a win over Northwestern at a football game. Very fun. All right. Uh, Purdue, what do you got, Kylie? Yeah, so many of you may know our athletic mascot, um, Purdue Pete, but our official mascot is actually the Boilermaker Special, which is the train that was on my slideshow. And it is actually the largest and the fastest college mascot in the country. And it goes up to 60 miles an hour on the highway. That's awesome. I love it. Okay. Uh, Sheila, what do you got for Iowa for us? Absolutely. So you probably remember that last slide that I showed, which is Kinnick Stadium, and there's a building just to the left of it. So we are considered one of the best college traditions in the nation, and that is called the Iowa Wave. So after every home game, at the first quarter, every home game, we all turn to the Children's Hospital, which is the Stead Family's Children's Hospital, that includes the football players, the refs, and the coaches, and every fan in that um, in that stadium will turn and wave to the children that are fighting and battling to stay healthy and get healthy and their family members at the top of the children's hospital. So if you ever get a chance to experience it, it's, it's amazing. I know my peers from the Big Ten, people will come to the campus for their games in order to experience that opportunity. Yeah, very fun. Robert, what about Maryland? Yeah, so uh, similar to the pride of our Big Ten partners, we have about six Testudo statues on our campus, the main one being in front of the library where everyone comes by and rubs her nose for good luck. But on top of that, the week of finals, we give Testudo offerings. And the more concerned you are about the final, the larger the offering is. So I've seen everything from McDonald's to plasma screen TVs and everything in between. Um, and one year it was blocked off for construction and our finals were a percentage lower than any other year. So it's written in Maryland campus law that there has to be a pathway to Testudo. I love that. Sylvia, what about Michigan State? Sure thing. Um, so Michigan State is actually the pioneer land grant institution for the entire country. We were the first land grant institution in the US and we started as the Michigan Agricultural College. So we were not always the Spartans. Our first mascot was actually the Aggies. I personally like Spartans better, but. I did not know that. Learn something new every day. Thank you. And then Scott, what about Indiana? Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned intramurals earlier. Um, IU Bloomington is home to the largest intramural cycling event in the country, which is known as the Little 500. It was uh, immortalized in the movie Breaking Away, which won an Oscar for Best Screenplay, always one of ESPN's top sports movies of all time. There are actually two Little 500 races. There's both a men's weight race and a women's race. They happen uh, the third weekend in April every year. It's uh, 200 laps around a quarter mile cinder track on a fixed gear Roadmaster bicycle. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Students come and cheer on their residence halls, fraternities and sororities, clubs and organizations, and it all raises money for uh, scholarships for working students. Very fun. Well, to each of the institutions, thank you so much for joining us this evening. For all the students and parents in attendance, thank you as well. On behalf of StriveScan and Loyola Academy, you guys have a great evening. Thanks for your time. Stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody.